This is an exercise in autograph involving a pattern of hexagons, and each hexagon is the same angle relative to the one before. And in this case, we've set it up so that this angle is a variable theta, and round we go. So we just need to see that all sorts of interesting patterns are about to happen. So we're going to explore this at the end, but for now we need to just set it up from scratch. And in autograph, the original shape uh, is always uh, dark blue, and then all other ones are different colors following from that. So we need to form uh, a hexagon. So that's six points here, they're all equidistant from the origin, of course. And if we make that one, then what are the others? So let's just uh, get the pen out for a second and uh, think about this. Now, if this point here comes along here, then this triangle here is going to be right angled, and that's going to be uh, the ratio of one to a half, which makes this angle 60 degrees, which is just what we want. Uh, so it looks like y equals a half and y equals a minus a half, and x equals zero will take care of all six points. Okay, so let's have a new page. Um, did notice that the y-axis was about minus two and a half to two and a half, so I'm going to double click on this and set the y-axis to uh, minus 2.5, tab 2.5. Okay, that fits that right. We're in the advanced level, which means we need to set degrees and equal aspect. They would be on by default in the standard level. Right, and then I think I'll just shunt this to the right a bit, and we're pretty much as the original diagram. So put a point at the origin, right-click, do a circle of radius 1. Perfect. Now we decided that uh, the line y equals plus and y equals minus a half would do the job. So I'm just going to enter y equals plus or minus a half. Perfect and also x equals 0. So enter x equals 0. So we now have all the bits we want to create our hexagon. I'm going to use the point mode now and the point mode is for putting points on things but if we press the control key it actually puts points at intersections. So one there, one there, one there, three, four, Five, and those are our six points that we want, and they're all equidistant from the origin. So now we want to hide the objects that we don't want. So I'm going to hide that line, that line, that line, and this circle, and right-click, Hide Objects. Good. Um, so I'm going to select all of these, but I don't want the origin, so I'm going to deselect that. And then I'm going to right-click, Group them to a shape. Perfect. We've now got our shape. Um, now we want to find the intersection between this line and this line. So I'm just going to select those two points and right click to a straight line there. These two points and right click to a straight line there. And again, point mode and control and perfect. There we go. All right. And now I want to deselect that, select the two lines and right click hide. So now we're going to start our rotation. So select that and select that, not control. Select that and select that and right click rotation. Now what I'm going to do is put this over here because I need theta quite a lot. Instead of an angle, the default angle of 90 degrees, I'm going to put an angle of theta. And I don't want the construction lines and round we go. Theta is a constant, so if we open up the constant controller, uh, we can move it round. I'm going to increase the step to 1 and move it round to 10, then increase the step to 10 and move it round to 60. Perfect. And then we just do this lots of times. So this one and this one, and right click rotation, and we want theta, no construction lines. Deselect that one, that one, right click. Rotation, theta, round we go. Now 
Perfect. We've now got our six. Um, it's quite nice, I think, if we show one of the radius points here. And uh, let's do that. Let's do a line segment. And this to here. Although we're not quite clear, actually, because these points are on top of each other, it's not terribly clear which we're on. So I'm going to just move it along a little bit. Um, and then you can see a bit more clearly. I think if we move it down to step of one, yeah, that's better. OK, so that did indeed correctly go here, but we want this one to this one and right click line segments so that I can do this to this to this. Notice that you do them in the order that creates a counterclockwise angle. Right click angle, allow reflex definitely, and we've now got a measurement of the angle there. If you want to get rid of this information down here, just go to Axes and don't show the key. OK, another thing you might want to do, let's just move it to the right a bit, is to, instead of having a, a number here, put theta here to make it clear that this is the angle theta, and then perhaps put the information up here somewhere. So with nothing selected, I'm going to open up a text box, and I'm going to put in theta, and then a space, and then equals, perhaps a couple of spaces after that, and click OK. So that will produce this. I don't really want a frame around it, so double click, edit the frame, let's have 100% and no border. That's better. Now here I want to put 60 and here I want to put theta. So I'm going to double click on this and edit the label settings and say don't anchor to the point. OK, OK. So now I can deselect everything and just drag this, hopefully, over to here. Now we've got theta equals 60. So we need to put theta down here. So selecting this, and then this, and then this. And then right-click Angle. Um, edit the label settings. Now I want to convert that to static text and replace this with the character theta. OK. And we definitely want reflex, of course. OK, and theta. Right, so that's theta. Let's just see how it works. And round we go. We now can see that theta is indeed that angle, and it's going round with it. So uh, what are the angles that uh, particularly make interesting diagrams? That's a nice one at 90. Next one's likely to be 120. Let's have a look. Yes, very nice. 180, of course. They'll collapse down to just two locations. And going all the way to 270 and beyond, and eventually they all collapse down to 360. Now that's a bit of a mess, isn't it? So let's just double click on the angle and display to one decimal place, see if that ties it up. Yes, it does. Um, there we go. So it's quite a fun little thing. And of course, if you want to set that uh, as an animation, repeat up and down. Let's go from 0 to 360 in steps of 1 and just sit back and watch it do it. <laughs>